What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Hotel Dusk 2. The last cape escapes the West something. I, I'm going to call it Hotel Dusk 2. Because I'm not going to remember the lost cape of the West. Whatever the heck it is. Alright, Hotel Dusk 2. We accepted... Well, actually, no. We received a request from a client to do a job in this hotel. And Kyle's just like, well... Well, that's odd, but I guess I'll do it. Oh wait, no, this isn't a hotel. I what? I'm getting the, I'm getting everything confused. Okay, just let's just let's just continue. <laughs> Actually, besides the recap that we did, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to leave? Let's try that. Let's try leaving. Eh? It's the phone again. Moshi Moshi. Hey. With the receiver pressed against my ear, I hear a familiar voice. Hi, Rachel. How are you doing, handsome? Mansome handsome. Who was Mansome handsome? Mansome handsome. What live stream is that from? Ah, it's been so long. I've been better. Sure you have. Things could be a lot worse, though. For someone who lost their job yesterday, you sound okay, at least. This is how he always sounds. Well, I'm not exactly full of sunshine and happiness, you know. You're never full of sunshine and happiness. You're just a sad sack. Same old Kyle. Always got something on your mind. Ed around? He just stepped out not five minutes ago. Said anything about me? Yeah, you've come up in conversation. He said that if you call, not to bother letting him know. Damn. Sounds like he's really blown a gasket this time. This is like a son talking to... Or a, a person talking to their sister about an angry parent. This is what this is like. And then some. Can you blame him, though? Some people might say he made the right choice. Three days after leaving on a job and not a single phone call to check in. This really is like a family phone call. You didn't even show up at the place you were supposed to be heading to. Okay, that's pretty bad. Maybe I did kind of have it coming. Still, even given the circumstances, why do you choose now to fire you? I mean, it's not like this is the first time you've slacked off on a job. Yeah, exactly! See? He's always messing up his job. So what's the big deal, Gramps? Could have been because I told him I don't want to do this kind of work anymore. Yeah, that'd do it. Line myself up for a bullet there, I suppose. Do you know when he'll be back? This is something he and I need to discuss. He'll be back a bit after lunchtime. Said he's gonna listen to the election candidate's speeches. Really? Doesn't sound like the Ed I know. He was always raging on about how much he hates politics. He mentioned that one of the people running for mayor is an ex-boss of his. A guy called Hugh Speck. What's with these names? The whole thing's going to be televised too. It'll be on at nine. Like these, all these names always, do they, they seem like names a Japanese team of developers would try to come up with to try and make it sound American. Right. Well, as soon as he gets back, get me on the phone. One other thing. You had a phone call earlier. Someone going by the name Rex Foster. I mean, come on. You know, Rex Foster? Hey, Kyle Hyde. You know anything about this Rex Foster? What? Rex Foster? I just said that you were on holiday and he hung up. He a friend of yours? Definitely not. But the same guy called my mom last night too. What did he want? That's what I want to find out. Seems he already knew I used to be a detective though. Rachel, can you do me a favor? If he calls again, let me know. And I'll be in touch when, when Ed gets back. 
Keep your pager on. Roger. I don't envy Rachel. She's Ed's PA, but also struggles to keep me and Ed civil. Come to think of it, she's the only woman I'm happy to be totally open with. Maybe you should tell her that. I reach into my pocket and switch out my pager. Rex Foster. It's home for imaginary friends. Hmm. Why is this guy keeping tabs on me? Nine a.m. Nine o'clock already. That's when Rachel said they'd start showing the speeches on the news. I guess if Ed's made the effort to drag himself along to listen, I might as well switch on the TV and give it a try. Got nothing better to do. Uh, TV. Where is? TV. Oh, okay, I was like, man, this guy doesn't have a TV. Where's the wires? No one would put a TV here. Where did the where's the wires? Uh oh oh my coffee table's covered in crap. My coffee table's covered in my my vices. There's a TV on the table, doesn't look like much, but at least it works. Somehow, despite it not being plugged in. Now, let me just fiddle. Oh. Okay. There's an old cartoon on. Screw the elections, he said. Pinky Rabbit, huh? The guy with the butt for his front. His butt is on his front. Pinky Rabbit. What do? That takes me back. I used to love this guy. What, what did it for you? Was it the butt in the front? Okay. This is the whole show! Ugh, television back in the day was not what, you know, it's cracked up to be. Hugh Speck, the most prominent candidate in this election. Thank you, Robert Harrison from News 5. We'll be giving his campaign speech momentarily. And 5 News... 5 News is here with live coverage of that speech. Stay tuned. Answering the cheers from the crowd, Hugh Speck takes the podium. Speck is a retired LAPD officer and is even now working to stamp out petty and organized crime in the city. Today at 4 p.m., 5 will be airing an exclusive look at the man himself. Don't forget to tune in. This is Robert Harrison for 5 News signing off. Thanks, Robert Harrison for 5 News. Hugh Speck, an ex-cop, and also Ed's old boss trying to become mayor now. Ambitious guy, looks like he's got a special TV slotted for. Think I'll check it out. Well, that was a lot of fun. Bow, bow, Can I leave? Oh, there's always someone. Someone buzzes my room. Who's there? Cool, you're still here. Great, what do you want? You know what time it is? Trust me, man, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. It's always important with you. Go on. I need your help. Like, really need your help. Calm down, will you? Spit it out. What's wrong? Just hear me out, okay? Come with me. I need you to help me out of a fix with some quick thinking. Quick thinking? I'm being squeezed by that chick down the hall, but she's got it all wrong. Sounds like a good problem you've got there. You're being... What the hell are you blabbing on about, Tony? You're getting squeezed real good? You better start making sense pretty soon or you're out of here. Tank, you gotta move that little butt. Move your butt. All right, all right, let me catch my breath. It's really bad. I mean, it's worse than really bad. 
What could be that bad? She's shouting out some crazy stuff, saying I'm a no good thief. Thief! Then you're, you get out of my room, thief. Come on, Tony, what did you do this time? Oh, I don't know, Kyle. She's calling him a thief. That's right, take one look at me and send me downtown. I'm innocent. Can't tell you how much I tried telling her. She thinks I've snatched her ring. Just keeps screaming it over and over. Ring. Getting squeezed over and over. Hmm, suspicious. Kyle might have to step in. Who thinks you've stolen their ring? Marie. That's who. She's made up her mind and won't listen to reason. Marie. You know, the chick living in room 206. She's the blonde one who moved in around half a year back. The stuck up one, right? So we're clear. Anyway, Marie's lost her ring somewhere and now she's accusing me. I'm drawing a total blank. Why does Marie think it was you that took the ring? Search me! She's gotta have a reason though, I mean she's not imagining it. I got no idea what she's thinking. I told you it doesn't make any sense to me. Did you try asking her why she thinks it was you? Yeah. But she just came out of nowhere and barged into my room. Demanding that I return her precious ring, she wouldn't even let me speak. So you didn't do anything that could have led her to suspect it was you. I don't know, I mean, I can't remember. Ah, I see. I don't know what she's on. Chick must be crazy or something. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Tony. But I need you to promise you really didn't take the ring. Why the hell would I even touch her stupid ring? I may be many things, but I'm not that kind of guy who steals people's stuff. Yeah, I guess you're not. Now I think about it, you're not the sort who'd grab a person's wallet. Damn right. Glad you finally realized, man. I'm not a thief. That's why I need you to go in there and convince her of the same. She's bound to listen to you. I don't have a chance in hell on my own. Yeah, well, let's hope you're right. I don't know why I'm being made to do this. All right, Marie. You got a moment? Maybe. What do you want? Looks like you and Tony are having some sort of disagreement. You could say that. Her name's Marie Rivet. Where do they get these names? She moved into 206 about half a year ago. I don't know the first thing about her. Can you tell me what happened? My ring's been stolen, that's what. It was that guy from 201, he did it. Actually, I wonder if these are gonna be useful to write. These are not, where are my handwritten notes? Page one. Uh, to oh, where's the pen? Tony, room two, oh, one. Marie, two, oh, six. And Rex. Shoot, what was his name? Rex. Oh, they're always one syllable. They're always once like Kyle Hyde, Marie Rivet. Oh, Rivet's two syllables, but Rex Meat, something like that. Find out who he is and kill him. Are you taking notes on? <gasps> uh, how about you mind your own business? Maybe I was drawing you, like, you know. Why are you so convinced it was him? Simple, he was the only person around when it went missing. He stole it right out of my room. How can you be so sure? He must have taken it this morning when I went to the vending machine in the lobby. I plan on going straight back to my room, so I left the door unlocked. 
Is that all you've got to go on? Not quite. I passed him on the stairs on the way down. He was heading up to the second floor. I think he seized that opportunity to snoop around in my room. And snatch my ring while I was away. So that's why you think it was him. Exactly. Seriously, that's the only reason you think it was him. It's got to be. I'm sure of it. After all, he was the only person around. And when he went past my room and saw the door was unlocked, he... He what? Well, it's no secret that he's short of cash. And I'm sure he's no stranger to taking other people's stuff either. No stranger? What the hell? I didn't realize he was just here the whole time. Getting too close to the truth, am I? Don't play the innocent with me. I've seen you borrowing money from other people in the building. I, nah, I don't have to listen to this crap. Take it easy, Tony. Waving your fists around ain't gonna help your case. Punching faces ain't gonna help. I know, man. Mr. Hyde, I don't know why he's decided to involve you in this. But all I want is for him to return my ring. What exactly did your ring go missing? I'd say about an hour ago. When I got back from the lobby, my door was open. This was unusual, but I headed inside and noticed my ring was gone. Are you wearing it? It wasn't in the place I remember leaving it. I knew what had happened immediately. He stole it. What kind of ring was stolen? A diamond one. It was a three carat diamond ring with rubies on it. Sounds like it came with quite a price tag. It's a very important ring to me. I got it as a present from someone special. Well, if anyone's gonna gift a diamond ring, it should be, I would assume it's a romantic gesture. I don't know why you'd be like, hey, you know, we're best bros. Diamond ring for my best bro. Where did you leave the ring? Inside my room. Though I don't see why I should share that sort of information with you. Do you see now, Mr. Hyde? Do you understand why I think he stole my ring? It's not that I don't understand what you're saying, Marie. But Tony's telling me a different story. He swears he didn't take it. Yeah, you tell her, Hyde. That's what I've been saying from the start. What would I want with that stupid ring anyway? Don't... Uh, what? She just explained why you would... This is... I hate it when people do this. It's... He is short of cash. Therefore, he probably stole my ring to sell. Because he needs cash. And then you got guys like this going, Why would I even take it? Why would I even take it? And it's like... Alright, now you're suspicious. How can you be sure it wasn't taken by someone who snuck into the building? After all, anyone can just wander in here. There are some weird people about. Like last night, when I saw this suspicious lady in sunglasses going out the door. Who the hell was that? You saw her too, right? Yeah, I saw her. Well, I'm not convinced. It goes without saying that there are suspicious people around. But if you ask me, you're the most suspicious one of the lot. Will you just drop it already? Get your hands off me. Tony, hey. Oh, you screwed the pooch this time, Tony. Can you people please keep the noise down? What's all this shouting in aid of anyway? Yes, what is this shouting in aid of? Betty! You gotta hear me out. Oh, is he gonna is he rope her in like he did me? It's Marie. She's saying all kinds of crap about me. Yeah, she thinks you've stolen a ring, right? And keep your voice down unless you want the entire block to hear you. I'm being set up. What would I want with her lousy ring? Marie. Yes? About the ring that you say was stolen. It's that diamond one you always wear, right? That's right. So you've seen this ring before, Betty. 
I've seen it. Don't know if the diamond's a real one or not, though. Of course it's real. Hate to say it, but I think you're pointing the finger at the wrong person, Marie. So it's settled. You do believe me after all. Slow down there, I never said that. But I just think your version of events is more believable than hers. What the fuck did you see? Marie, this isn't the first time this kind of thing has happened, is it? I don't know what you mean. Come on, think back. It was when you first moved into the building. You were ranting about some of your stuff going missing then too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you blame the whole thing on Billy from 205? In the end though, it turned out that the moving company just messed up. What I'm trying to say is, before you go blaming Tony, why don't you try searching your apartment again? And if you really want to continue this ruckus, do it somewhere else. I can't hear myself think with all the shouting right outside my door. After having her say, Betty retreats into her room. Marie, they're minerals, Marie. I'm not saying I believe Betty, but anyone can make a mistake, you know. And just what are you implying, Mr. Hyde? I just said anyone can make a mistake, Marie. Why don't we call the cops? Hmm. You should check your room again. You could get lucky and find your ring there after all. I have already checked everywhere. I told you it's not there. I hear you, but what's the harm of having one last look? Okay, okay. Maybe we could take a look around my room one more time. We? Oui. But if I'm right and the ring doesn't show up, what are we gonna do then? Maybe you could take a look around Tony's room. You don't have a problem with that, do you, Tony? Guess I don't. Then it's settled. But I have one condition, Mr. Hyde. You have to check my room. Me? While I'm in it. And check my bed. Thoroughly. Really get in there. Now I'll help you look. You and Mr. Wolf seem to be friends and you think he's innocent, so... You need to be the one to check the room before you take me seriously. Then we'll see who's telling the truth. If you insist. I'll wait for you in my room. Wow, Marie, this is one long ploy to get Kyle. I mean, sure, I mean, he's got that full head of hair, that silly little goatee, those broody eyes. He's always wearing a loose tie. Marie finishes speaking and returns to room 206. All right, man, well, you better get in there. Also, notes. Uh, Billy two oh five. Are you scratching the carpet, Kitty? What are you up to? I don't know what my cat's up to. Okay. She is in 204? No. This is why I write these dang things down. Marie is in 206. That is the wrong way to go. The door is open. You need to start locking your door. So this is Marie's room. So it's very brown. Please come in, Mr. Hyde. Search as much as you like, but I doubt you'll find anything. Don't be so sure, I can be pretty uh, thorough. Before I get started though, I'm curious. Can you tell me where you left the ring this morning? I put it on the table just in front of my sofa. I remember clearly putting it there, it's not there now though. 
Remember clearly, huh? Do you normally wear the ring, Marie? Yes. But I do take it off and place it on my bedside table before going to bed. Any other times you take it off? Heh <laughs> heh. Well, yes. When I wash my face or if I'm cleaning dishes in the kitchen, for example. Also, I usually take it off when I'm putting on my makeup. I see. Sounds like we've got quite a few places to search. Let's check over here. The sink is spotless. Free of any and all debris, including rings. Hmm. The doors ain't in great condition, but they're clean as can be. Okay. Nothing stands out about the stove except how clean it is. Free of all kinds of debris, including what I'm looking for. Not really sure what I need to inspect. It'd be inspecting Marie's cooking equipment so closely. There's a wooden cupboard in the corner with a lock on it, same as in my room. Refrigerator's making an awful racket. There's a cup on the shelf with a toothbrush resting in it. There's a built-in wash basin next to the fridge. Well, it's not there. Hey, it's my face! Good to know I'm not a vampire. Alright, so it's not the sink where she brushes her teeth, or, and, um, not quite sure where she puts on her makeup yet. How do you open this door? Mr. Hyde, I'd rather you didn't go snooping around in my bathroom. I never even take my ring in there. Just checking out all the possibilities. Don't get the wrong idea. Okay, let's take a look over here. It's a dresser with a huge mirror on it. Someone likes looking at herself. Marie keeps her mirror clean and shiny. Various makeup bottles were sat in front of the mirror. She sure has a lot of different kinds of makeup. This chest of drawers looks like it's undergone some repair work. This photo- uh, this photograph is of a young gentleman flashing a charming smile. On the chest of the drawers is a photograph of a young woman. The TV is spotless, but not actually plugged in. Priorities, I guess. Just like your TV, you mean. Ah, well, well, what do we have here? Seems to be something lodged between the dresser and the chest of drawers. What's that? Looks like something shiny has dropped down between the furniture. Well, what do we have here? I think I found some I was right the whole time down here. Looks like my manly arms are too big to fit into the gap. <laughs> yeah, if you know what I mean. Hey, Marie. What is it? Mind if I shift this dresser a little? Good luck. Thanks for the support. That dresser's fixed tight to the wall and there's no easy way of moving it. Good idea, in my opinion. I wouldn't want it falling every time we have an earthquake. Then we may have a problem. Now what? What is it, Mr. Hyde? Looks like something's fallen between the dresser and the chest of drawers. I'm gonna get a closer look. Between the dresser and the drawers? Right between. Are you sure you're not just seeing things? I can't make much out at all. You never know. Could turn out to be your ring. Problem is, I can't get my arm in to pull it out. Got anything lying around we could poke in there to get it out? Heh <laughs> Like what? Doesn't really matter what. Just has to be thin enough to fit into the gap. Heh <laughs> <laughs> Nothing really springs to mind. If you find anything that looks likely to fit, feel free to give it a try. Looks like I got another search on my hands. Don't have to look very far, man. Gotta find, like, a coat hanger or something. Can I look in this closet? I think I'll have a poke around in the closet. There's a dark gray jacket scrunched up at the back of the closet. Several boxes of women's shoes are cluttering up the closet. 
These shoes look pricey. How many pairs of shoes does a dame need anyway? A shoe box with a blue lid. Can't see a price tag, but I bet these shoes were expensive. Okay. What else can I use? The bed's not only made, it's practically hospital worthy. Everything in the drawers is folded and laid out neatly. Okay. Like nearly all furniture in the building, the chest of drawers is showing its age. Hmm. Well, the kettle's not gonna help. There's a matching white coffee pot and coffee cup on the table. The pot is stone cold. Must have been a while since she heated up the water. The newspaper on the table has yesterday's date on it. It reads, December 18th, serial robberies at jewelers. Due to the recent spate of robberies targeting expensive jewelry, the LAPD has requested all parties who may be a target tighten their security. They are aiming to apprehend these criminals as soon as possible. But according to a source in the department, they currently have no leads to work from. Looks like a piece on jewelry thieves. Where am I gonna find what I need? There's a sketch of the room on the table. It must be something to remember this room by after she moves. There's a cup of coffee on the table. It's getting pretty cold. It must have been a while since she poured it. There's a white box resting on the tabletop. Inside I can see it's packed full of cookies. The lid looks like it might just be small enough to fit into the gap. Oh wow, okay, so we're using this. I pick up the box lid. Alright, let's come all the way back over here. No! Alright, now I'm assuming I have to go into my bag. My magic murder bad bag. There's something shining between the dresser and drawers. Maybe I can use this lid to latch onto the thing and drag it out. Whoa! Ah! Um... Oops. No! No, 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 no. That's done it. Now I pushed it even, even, even more. Didn't think that one now, did you, Hyde? Is something wrong? I take it from the way you're acting, it didn't work. It's no problem, I just gotta give it some more thought. You better get thinking then. Oh, I okay. Oh, I can't use this? Oh. Hmm. Can't use any of those. The toothbrush? Do you think she won't mind? Oh, 
Oh, nope, I can't use it. Okay. I feel like we're running out of things here. A bookcase in the corner. It bears the telltale signs of a lifelong life of heavy abuse. The books on the bottom shelf are all written by the same author. He must be good. There's a photo frame next to the books on the bottom shelf. The photograph is a portrait of a handsome young man. Who could it be? Mr. Hyde, you don't think the object you found under the dresser could be... Let's hope so. Well, that was a pointless conversation. And I would love to solve and finish this, but I don't know where I can find... Oh my god, the coat hanger's right here. May I? How convenient, there's a wooden hanger on the side of the closet. Now this looks like just the thing to need to fit the gap. I knew it. Uh, that's the reason I checked the closet in the first place. Oh man, so embarrassing. Well, it's been 36 and a half minutes, so I'd like to end this video here. So we'll have to bit get the thing, get the ring out from under next time. So stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye bye.